Very welcome, Rohit. Very welcome, India, and very welcome, Indian Hemp uh, Association. We are very proud uh, how many India wor uh, work uh, in less days, in less month, in in less three years. Uh, uh, you growing, you you lead very big Indian industry and hemp association. Please, Rohit, world is your and world is your. Please. Thank you so much. Well, as uh, I will talk slow and keep it simple, uh, because giving uh, for the first time a presentation over the Skype and technical glitches will happen. So if it happens, uh, any questions from the audience, uh, please, you can ask me in the end. And uh, to start with, I would like to share that India is famous for uh, myths and mysteries. And the tagline also goes for hemp in India, for with the same. Uh, despite 6,000 years back, benefits of hemp were written in our Indian religious books called Vedas. I would like to say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and namaste from India. Namaste. Today. One applause today. for Rohit for, for <laughs> India, please. <laughs> Rohit, you have bigger audience online, uh, but we I, excellent I, I, see I, you and excellent hear you. For any another slide, please uh, tell me my uh, just second slide. We are yeah. with first slide, uh, uh, first your yes. uh, introduction slide, please. Yes. So it, uh, can you can you enlarge the slide to the main uh, page, like full screen? Can you go for the full yeah, screen? Yeah, but we then have a problem with change here. Ah, uh, okay, it's going uh, on. Yeah. yeah. Topics. All right. Can you make it uh, the full full play so the presentation yeah so yes okay hold hold it yeah no it's not impossible okay in uh, today's presentation i will focus on four topics starting with an iiha video presentation and moving forward to regulatory government bodies and provisions for hemp in india suitable climate for growing hemp in India, and at last, hemp research and opportunities in India. Now I'll request uh, Mazda if you can play the video first for the IIHA presentation. I don't think that we have a video for hemp regu uh, regulation government bodies and for hemp in India. Uh, I sent it to you. We cannot play this. So sorry. Uh, wait, wait a second. Just talk can about you, it you, with slides. Can, and can, you, can you see me? Uh, I cannot see this uh, film already. But uh, sorry, sorry. We are ready to take you on a journey. This, this video? The Lord of Lords and Shiva discovered hemp, commonly known as Gajiga in Sanskrit. Do you have this video? Yes, but I don't know that we have here. Rohit, please, uh, you just okay, talk, then, and uh, uh, later we will later. find video, yeah, we can, uh, we do it and later, we then. will play uh, him. Is it all right, so? Yes. It, okay. Okay, so I'll start with the second topic straight away with the regulatory government bodies. Yes. I think you have to uh, go back uh, to the yeah, third slide, fourth slide. Can, you, can we go for the fourth, fourth slide? For Ministry of Home Affairs. Yes, Ministry of Home Affairs. We have this slide. Yes. We see this yes. slide in uh, audience, please. Where is your? Okay. So uh, these are the uh, various government bodies under which uh, the hemp falls in, in India. And uh, from starting from Ministry of Finance and Revenue, Central Excised and Central Bureau of Narcotics, Crime Branch, 
Ministry of Agriculture and Horticulture, Department of Ayush, Ministry of Textile, FSSI, and so on. So uh, the whole department in India is well structured. Uh, if in concern or with the uh, you know primary focus of these departments, how to stop illicit hemp plantation, uh, coca plantation, and poppy plantation. When I say hemp. Uh, it is not still demarked in India as marijuana as around the world as high THC and from the British Raj uh, it is stated as Indian hemp in India and various parts of Africa. So this is also one of the challenges with these departments uh, to demark uh, uh, hemp, cannabis, all, all varieties whether low THC, high THC, all are hemp for the government of India. Uh, poppy cultivation is allowed for medicinal purposes in India and is efficiently managed by these departments. Uh, but no permission has been given uh, by these departments to grow hemp till date. Despite uh, the cultivation, can we change the slide, second slide? Yes. Yep. Are we on the second slide? Yes. Next slide? Yes. Okay. So if you see the section 14, uh, 1985 act uh, in section 8, uh, it already was stated uh, that cannabis plant or for industrial purpose only for obtaining fiber uh, can, uh, can be grown. Okay. Taking this uh, provision, uh, IIHS started its mission to uh, promote industrial hemp in India almost uh, three to four years back. Uh, next slide. Yes, you have. Yeah. So if you, uh, no, uh, next slide uh, with the logos consortium. Yes, logos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so under Indian Industrial Hemp Association, these organizations have the following roles. Uh, we involved CABI, which is an IGO. Uh, the central, uh, the Center of Agriculture and Bioscience International is a not-for-profit and intergovernmental development uh, and information organization based in United Kingdoms. And uh, CABI works with IIHA on scientific approach because as per our policy in India, uh, we require an evidence-based approach uh, to grow hemp or to acquire a license to grow hemp. Sri Ram Institute is an 1940 was established in 1940 and the oldest uh, part, partly government partly private institute collaborated with the uh, Indian Industrial Hemp Association to do research on hemp uh, with us. PhD Chambers is was established in 1905 in India and is the oldest uh, chamber of commerce. Uh, who works with Indian Industrial Hemp Association for government secretarial import and export work on hemp. Then various other organizations have different roles uh, and this is the consortium uh, we work. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yes, pictures of your members. Yeah, so these are the IHA core team uh, working with us. You can move to the next slide. Wonderful team you have. Hemp cult cultivation. Yes. So IHA works on a PPP model, which is uh, very common in India. And the state government promotes this model for any uh, manufacturing units or growing or bigger projects you want to get that in their states. And uh, where IHA uh, works on uh, getting the licenses, uh, as we are a not for profit organization, we don't directly get involved uh, with the government about uh, we lobby it for anybody who wants to grow hemp. We, do, we can do breeding programs, we can do technical research, all these things, but uh, license can be granted to IHA, but to grow hemp in India, IHA have to contract it to a, a corporate company to further grow it. So can you uh, go for the next slide? Yes, hemp cultivation. Yeah, so uh, these are the uh, states where IIHA has uh, procured license and filed for licenses. Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, and uh, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Manipur are under screening, which we hope 2017 we will get the license to grow. 
we are also getting a lot of uh, interest from international uh, uh, countries to do a lot of research on uh, Indian hemp, which we also initiate uh, through this model. Can we move to the next slide with the picture? Yes, you have your team in pictures. Yeah, so this was the meeting with the Chief Secretary of Uttarakhand, which everybody was hearing in the news uh, for finalizing the draft policy of growing hemp in Uttarakhand. And uh, it took us a lot of time uh, to make them understand how the whole system and the policy should work. The policy has already been drafted, uh, but the breeding program is under its way. And uh, we have to take, again, a lot of evidence-based approach to grow hemp in Uttarakhand uh, so that we can open it for the common public and the corporates. Can we move to the next picture? Yes. With Chief Minister. So this is the... Yeah, this is the Chief Minister of Jharkhand. Uh, we proposed 5,000 hectares of a hemp plantation project for a bigger company in India uh, for fiber procuring, and uh, which has been signed. And uh, we are just working on the monetary terms right now. And uh, we will be starting this project in 2017 uh, because it's a quite a big project. A lot many things have to be taken in consideration. Next slide. Yes. Yeah, this is just a sample copy. It's written in Hindi of acceptance of uh, growing hemp in Uttarakhand region. As I told, primarily they, there is uh, no uh, word as industrial hemp. So they gave us a, uh, they accepted the letter as a medicinal hemp, uh, and uh, which uh, industrial hemp would be covered in the same breeding program. Next slide. Now farmers can cultivate hemp in state. Yes, so these uh, were the news which were rotating and uh, there's still a lot of things are getting developed. These are not the accurate rep uh, media reports, uh, but uh, the percentage of growing hemp in India will also uh, work in hand in hand with national policies, uh, not 0.3%. If Europe uh, policy goes down for THC, we have to work accordingly because uh, uh, India will be based, the whole business model would be based on export. And uh, so we have to rework the whole, uh, the THC limits with the government and uh, see if the breeding program goes in hand in hand with the European varieties. Uh, can you have the next slide now? Yes, we have International Hemp Conference. Yeah, so IHA is also organizing uh, to get the government bodies, corporate, international organization on the same platform to have a dialogue like Hemp Congress Slovenia is doing very efficiently. And uh, we involve all uh, the government bodies to be present over there and give answers to the question if somebody has as a panel discussion. Uh, this is the uh, picture of the first hemp conference where 120 participants attended the conference. Uh, can we have the second slide? Yes, you have, please. Yeah, this is the picture of second conference uh, where 250 participants attended the conference. That also shows how much uh, keen interest it, it, India has uh, taken towards hemp. And the Commissioner of Agriculture and Horticulture of India was the chief guest on this platform. And uh, various other countries also participated in this. Next slide. Yes, you have. Yeah, I would like to invite all of you to for the third uh, international conference, which is going to happen on 30th November. Uh, and uh, uh, anybody who's interested can uh, log into our website and see the details. We can have the next slide. Uh, hemp in India. Yeah. Yes. Okay, next slide with the map. You have? So, soil map. So uh, this is the map of India, uh, a soil map of India. If you see north to south, east to west, India has primarily alluvial black and uh, red and yellow soil. And if you see the hemp sign on the maps, uh, these are the places where IIHA will be starting hemp cultivation. And we primarily selected these areas because these are the jute cultivating belt of India and the labor are well uh, skilled to cultivate and process jute fiber. And uh, so we primarily we selected these areas to start the hemp projects because their skilled labor is already present in these states. 
Next slide. And they are temperature. Yeah. And are yeah, these are the, this is a temperature map uh, of India. And uh, starting from 27.5 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, it goes. This is also a challenge for us uh, when we talk about the European varieties. Uh, we tested a few varieties which uh, the results were not but uh, European varieties come from the top near to the uh, or ab above the equator and so and we are in the and uh, so we are uh, trying to experiment more uh, with the Indian varieties and I also have selected few Australian varieties uh, so this is uh, this is just to uh, an example because of the equator we are situated to uh, what all problems we are facing and uh, we are countering them can we have the next slide uh, so you you use uh, in India only European Union seeds? Short question. Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that 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 didn't work for us. Any uh, if phenola, all these varieties, uh, we tried uh, just a single seed, twelve, ten, two seeds, but uh, was not a success uh, to a great extent. So we dropped the whole uh, idea of uh, growing the European varieties, and if we start. Uh, and the start growing the European varieties, it will take us, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, time to make better, which uh, I think uh, it didn't work. Uh, the answer in short is uh, European variety did not work in India in a very efficient manner. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can skip this slide. This is just a rainfall map. Uh, come to, yeah, this slide. Uh, this is this is the area where uh, the jute is growing in these states and where West Bengal dominate in the jute production and 80% of the world jute from India comes from uh, just one state, West Bengal. And that shows if we started growing hemp, we also have to see we don't, don't oversupply hemp around the world uh, because it's quite potential in these states. Uh, next slide. Top 10 cotton producing Yeah, these states. are the cotton, cotton states. Yeah, these are the primarily the cotton state where Gujarat dominates in the cotton cultivation. And uh, after covering the jute belt, we will try to focus on the cotton belt. Not now. It will take us five to ten years to reach this site as uh, they are primarily dominated by uh, the cotton. Uh, why I'm explaining in the research context? Because uh, if somebody wants in India to focus on which areas, so these are the areas right now to be excluded uh, for a while. And in the later, uh, once, once the breeding program has been done and better variety is there, we can practice in these areas. And uh, as the farmers also are uh, pro, pro cotton growers, uh, hemp won't be adapted as fast as uh, for the other areas which we showed in, in the previous map. So uh, we can see some wild hemp pictures on from the next slide if you can move. Wild hemp. Yeah, these are the these are the wild hemp which are grown all over India. Uh, like we don't nobody grows them grows wild. So this is all wild hemp. Uh, you can keep moving the slide to the sec next slide till these pictures are there. These all are wild hemp which are grown in India. Uh, before the map, uh, the last picture, if you see, that is a illicit marijuana plantation in Tirpura. Uh, if you see these bushes, uh, these are illicit marijuana plantation. It is very unlike uh, the wild hemp which is grown uh, in uh, India. It is a more uh, organized manner run by a lot of narcos who handle in India these marijuana plantation and they're very organized and they, if you see these farms are properly managed and maintained and they don't allow these male flowers to be grown near these crops also. Sorry for jumping question. So uh, wild hemp is not forbi forbidden in India? Uh, wild hemp is grown wild. Nobody grows them. It is naturally growing uh, from ages. Uh, so it is very, very hard for the government to even destroy it. It is in uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, <laughs> hectares all over India. So wild hemp is a huge biomass uh, which uh, should be used and uh, we, we would like, you know, to even uh, 
uh, ask a lot of corporates to come and or international companies who wants to use uh, this biomass uh, which can be used which is growing naturally and nobody is growing them around the streets open fields uh, which can be used in various manners up in the hills people are using it uh, for the fiber uh, but it is uh, it is a very uh, it has done in a very small scale and uh, people are literally scared of touching them because uh, if cop catches them then they might uh, get into trouble even with the wild hemp so uh, special permissions special provisions uh, yes uh, these wild hemp can also be used for biomass fiber and various other things and uh, uh, if to the coming to the large scale for this i think a very systematic organized uh, company should participate to do so and uh, ih can support them to do so and so, how is with thc uh, this is the india uh thc limit i'll come to that Wild point uh, in my next slides yes uh, so the next slide is uh, where hemp can be grown in india is almost everywhere Uh, apart from few areas where it's too dry or too hilly but almost everywhere indian climate uh, uh, you know hemp can be grown now uh, what do we do with this hemp is next slide if you see uh, cops burning the hemp uh, we we burn it primarily and uh, which is just a fraction of hemp which is grown in india so we can move to data of hemp in india yes we have yeah. slides okay uh, where so can hemp be grown yeah yeah so hemp is not cultivated in india so as i told you earlier uh, and it is grown wild uh, so we exactly don't have uh, the data how much hemp is grown in india what we did is we started collecting the information how much hemp was destroyed in india and uh, by the news clippings i have added if you just uh, go to the next slide if you see the news clippings from kashmir and many other places yes. can you come to the slide yeah so if you see uh, the canals like 20 canals lakhs of canals uh, were destroyed in central kashmir where bhang is in india indian language hemp uh, was were growing and if you move to the next slide again uh, then again marijuana plants were destroyed bordering villages in tirupura which i showed the image also then coming you can move down to the another uh, slide where ganja worth rupees 72 crores were destroyed and if you see uh, in the bottom i have uh, make a bracket like hemp destroyed so that's what i said like uh, Um, there is no um, in the media people still use marijuana but uh, in in the indian books it is indian hemp so uh, they use hemp also uh, under the category of a narcotic marijuana so hemp destroyed again uh, 56250 plants so like these uh, we calculated next slide if you can go uh, we almost destroyed like 100 uh, we just calculated like 100000 acres uh, just an approx figure 100000 acres worth 20 million hemp uh, was destroyed within 5 years in india so that that that's how we got a little bit of data like how much hemp we have and we can okay no worries yeah so we can move uh, from research and opportunities if you can click on research and opportunities and the second slide on research and opportunities there is a certificate government certificate yes do we have that so uh, this is a certificate uh, which you get uh, from a ministry of finance primarily and it took us almost 3 years to get and usually they give this certificate if you want to start any research or any development in india this certificate is must to uh, require uh, procure thc uh, standards or to work with anything related to thc because thc is a schedule scheduled substance so uh, to work with hemp in india uh, this is granted by ministry of finance and once you have this certificate you can import thc standards and uh, uh, work with industrial hemp or any hemp varieties in india so uh, just to start with the research uh, everybody should know what it requires to work or research in india 
uh, and what all documentations are required. So uh, we procure all our standards from Eco Pharmaceutical. Uh, and uh, as our partners are a part government body, we procured this license. Uh, this license is not allowed to be uh, given to any private company or an organization. So can we move to the next slide? Yes, you have. Yeah, so this is uh, IIH recently collaborated with NBPGR, which is a germ plasm bank of India. And uh, we are sharing just uh, 20 varieties of just the northern region. We have south, east and west. And these uh, varieties uh, are under research uh, for uh, with us, and uh, we have also collaborated with Chinese uh, Yunnan uh, Institute, who works for Chinese military, to work uh, on a uh, lot of uh, Yunnan varieties and Indian varieties uh, with these uh, things. And uh, to share on Uttarakhand, uh, if you see, a lot of Uttarakhand varieties are listed on this, and in northern areas uh, of this state, especially in Parvati Valley. Uh, new varieties are growing here. In this case, they are not coming uh, from natural hybrid, uh, hybridization, uh, but from European hybrids and with high THC levels. Uh, the plant uh, with more than 12% THC are found here, in primarily in this Uttarakhand uh, Parvati Valley region. Uh, on the contrary, uh, northeast states. Uh, is, uh, is that of geographical area between Himalayan, Indo, uh, China and Chinese region of Yunnan. Uh, a mixture of different sativa phenotypes are found. Uh, some plants are uh, uh, monoecious and uh, have a less THC uh, than other plant, uh, Indian plants, uh, like less than 4% THC are found in those regions. But primarily Uttarakhand, all regions have been hybrids and uh, European varieties have been found. Uh, who, have, who they have like very high THC limits. Uh, if I answered your question, which you asked me earlier. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Can you move to the next slide? Yes, black slide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, they, these are the tests which we uh, provide to anybody who wants to uh, either a corporate company or. A, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know a research group or an institute on uh, institute who wants to work in India, uh, these are the all listed uh, types of research uh, and certification program can uh, be provided by our association through uh, yeah, uh, Sri Ram Institute Lab, which is a US FDA lab, and all other certifications is with this lab. So we can go for the next slide, Sri Ram Institute. Yes. Industrial research. Delicate. So these are the three facilities uh, located in three different states, uh, up, down, and south. And all facilities are well equipped, uh, follows all major testing guides lines followed internationally. Uh, we are also open for tie-ups for other reputed labs uh, who uh, wants to you know, collaborate and wants to work with Indian varieties uh, for certification program or any private company wants to certify their you know, products in India before entering. Uh, they can we can get them certified in these labs of IHA. Uh, next slide. About us. <laughs> yeah, so Sri Ram Institute is spread over 30 acres uh, of property and has a six decades of experience in the research field. So we can move to the next slide. Are we uh, have we shifted? Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So this uh, Sri SRI lab uh, has a staff of over 5,000 people and having more than 400 research scientists uh, coming from different fields. And uh, we have a dedicated team of 70 scientists who is working on hemp on various projects, which I will share with you on the other slides. So next slide. Yes. Please. Yeah, so these are the few certification IOSF standards uh, which Sri Ram Institute have uh, under their belt. And recently they got a US FDA certification also for labs and European standards certification also. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Yes, research. Yeah, so in context of research in India, uh, these are the few sectors um, uh, we will be starting the research on. Few have already been started, uh, starting from ethanol production from IHEMP herd, 
uh, hemp fiber composite for green brick lining. Uh, then coming to the next slide, uh, you can see uh, phytoremediation uh, by I hemp plant. Uh, this this research particularly we are doing uh, with also with the Yunnan China Institute uh, for Army. Uh, uh, we are doing with the, uh, the Chinese with the Indochina Alliance Agreement, and uh, so we are doing cellophane and rayon and nanocellulose. Uh, and moving forward to the next slide. You have next slide. Uh, yeah, these are the other research areas we are doing. Uh, these are the private research which is going on with CBD THC based medicines, which has already been almost done uh, with AMRO and HCG hospitals, uh, cancer hospitals. They are primarily cancer hospitals, and then improvising non goody paper pulping, uh, Im improvising uh, the. Uh, to, I'm, my voice is echoing, so I'm taking a break. So uh, NEPA mills, CPRRI, uh, we started a non woody paper pulping research. Uh, the, if you, if uh, people don't know, but India used 60% of non woody pulp to make uh, newspapers and other papers, materials, and Indian government and CPRRI, which is a pulping uh, research body of India, uh, they are uh, looking for more, uh, uh, you know, uh, options to make their non woody paper much better. So uh, they are. Uh, we are introducing 30% of hemp uh, pulp to work and make the strength of uh, these paper a little bit m uh, much better. And uh, quite uh, was successful, but the research is still on on the pulping methods. Also, uh, we are also working on some bioplastic thin films, hemp cottonization, and some uh, Indian Army uniforms with DRDO. Uh, DRDO, we also have started uh, recently uh, some uh, on the medicinal front of the PTSDs uh, trials, uh, which we just submitted, uh, and we are hoping that it will be accepted as uh, the other hemp uh, research. So we can move to the next slide. Land of opportunities. <clears throat> Take a break if you need. Yes. Uh, and some water. So, <laughs> yes. So uh, can we move to the next slide, the population? Land of uh -huh, population, yes, yes. Yes. So. Next slide. Yeah, so we are the second largest population in the world, uh, where 50% uh, of the population is under 25. And uh, uh, as per the market opportunities related to hemp, uh, next slide. I don't know if people are, I'm, I'm just uh, giving my speech completely blind <laughs> on the phone. So I hope uh, everybody is getting, but I'll be open for all the questions at the end. Do ask me questions. You are great. Uh, so, you are great. <laughs> uh, okay. So if we cater only to the 10% population, we will require 1.32 million tons of hemp oil and food products every month. And to produce that nearly 10 million tons of hemp seeds and 30 million tons of hemp fiber for clothing. Now that solely India definitely cannot produce. That's why we also, a lot many companies in India have started importing and starting started the business in India by importing. That's also a good way uh, to launch uh, uh, industrial hemp in India. Uh, can we have the next slide? Make in India? Yes, yes make in India. So uh, foreign direct investment with the new government, our Modi government in India has opened this initiative. And there are a lot many options to invest in India. And as uh, with the contract uh, as IH is having, we are open for international companies and groups who wants to come for a contract farming. Uh, who wants to research on uh, medicinal uh, hemp. We are also open uh, for a breeding programs. Uh, if somebody wants to participate, like we collaborated with uh, China and recently with the, one of the Barcelona Institute group and um, uh, so on. So I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will like to say to the end slide, thank you. And uh, I just 
said whatever quickly and i will i'm open for the questions i think that would be the best way over the skype to end my uh, presentation rohit uh, thank you very much uh, we know thank that you. you must be today with us in slovenia but uh, your leg is broken unless today is before you must arrive here in slovenia I'm yeah. very sorry for this. Uh, we wish meet you. We wish know you here in Slovenia. Uh, any questions? Audience questions? Yes, please. You have questions. Microphone. Hello. Yeah. Just Hello. You can uh, hear. Roy. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, uh, hi Roy. This is uh, Sagar Samaria from the UK. Um, thanks very much, firstly, for your talk. Um, last few years, India seems to be doing a heck of a lot of stuff, even if it is just research, than um, what we seem to be doing in my country in the UK. So well done on that. Um, just got a few quick questions um, for you very quickly. Um, one is, my interest is also in addition to the hemp, my interest is also in the Ayurvedic medicine. And I just wanted to know what's the progress in terms of speaking with or collaborating with the main Ayurvedic institutes about um, the medicinal side. So you are speaking to the scientifically proven side, but is there an interest from the um, Ayurvedic side to actually uh, re-recognize this plant? And then the other thing you said was with regards to the, the wild hemp that is just growing wildly in India. Um, and when, they, when the government does sort of chop the hemp down, I'm just wondering an, another better way to maybe explain it to people, is it to actually talk about it in terms of the, the carbon capturing as well and actually show people, obviously this is hemp, but when we've cut down, let's say, 100 acres of this, then um, it's not very good for your carbon limits. And I think this is something that if it was to be displayed to the world that this is what India is doing without realizing, um, I, I, I just think that this would really um, play, um, play, play to your side. Thank you, if you can answer. You understand question? Okay, so one I under I, I didn't get to you properly, but first I got is the medicinal research. You asked something, so can we uh, can you repeat uh, that, Mazda, for me? Yeah, as you as you know, in Ayurvedic medicine, the the cannabis or the bhang is very important in the scriptures. So what progress is being made um, in collaboration or speaking with the main Ayurvedic institutes in India? Did you get that? You're talking about the approvals? No, me? no, f for the for the Ayurvedic, you know the Ayurveda Institute. Ayurveda, yeah, see, yeah. Uh, so what's the yes, progress uh, cannabis, there? Cannabis is already uh, uh, is allowed in the Ayurvedic medicine, but the issue uh, with, uh, there are a lot of issues with Ayurvedic uh, style of working and the pharmaceutical white, uh, style of working. If I'm going correct, just you can stop me in between. So. Ayurvedic uh, goes way back and uh, uh, on the uh, on the pharmacopoeia of Ayurveda uh, and uh, of, uh, volume 1 on uh, 75th page, it is already given uh, that cannabis uh, is uh, one of the APIs uh, for uh, using uh, bhang uh, in Hindi for Ayurvedic preparations. But uh, it, can, it can only be used in a crude form. Uh, it can only be, uh, you know, used as leaves or uh, make a, uh, if you have to do an extraction, uh, milk extraction is allowed uh, when under Ayurveda with cannabis. And uh, they have some classic medicines uh, which uh, bahang, uh, hemp is used, uh, cannabis is used, and which uh, definitely uh, anybody wants to work with them can work with them. Just the, thanks very much for that answer. The second question was with regards to the, you said the amount of hemp that is, um, you know, whether the, the, the police are chopping down the hemp because of lack of knowledge. So 
to the outside world who is not knowledgeable about hemp, but the common words that we hear in climate change is about the carbon reduction, then how it is by actually putting hemp in terms of carbon reduction, is that something that would not um, improve the credibility of what India is doing when you go to the United Nations or the World Trade Organization? If, if you speak about it in terms of carbon reduction rather than just hemp. I'm not getting uh, this properly, but if you can mail me uh, in detail or we can have a talk again, I can answer this question because I'm, or Mazda, if you can repeat me, repeat the question because uh, he's breaking a lot. So uh, we, will, we will end this discussion because we are out of uh, timing. Yeah. Rohit, thank you very much. Uh, any, anybody who has lo or any questions, uh, they can mail me and uh, uh, I'll be very happy to answer their questions or Mazda can share my Skype ID. You can definitely talk to me over uh, in detail if you want to discuss. And thank you, uh, Mazda, a lot, uh, lot. And uh, hi to all my friends, Daniel, Andreas, so who so all are there. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. We wish have you here in Slovenia and uh, see you next year in Slovenia, really in Slovenia. Yeah. Health and already here in the audience. Thank you very much, Rohit. Thank you. Thank stay you. Stay still, you. stay strong. And uh, we fly sure. again back in Slovenia with our presentation. Stay with us, Rohit. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you soon.